Imagine your favorite animated character. Could you describe to me what he or she is wearing? I mean, it's pretty easy, right? <laughs> most of mine don't even wear pants. And most cartoon characters only have one or two outfits. But there is one cartoon that has five or six outfits for all of its major cast. As Told by Ginger focuses on a female middle schooler and later high schooler named Ginger Foutley, who with her friends tries to transition from social geeks to the popular kids in the fictional town of Sheltered Shrubs, located in the even more fictional state of Connecticut. You know, Connecticut, a place where you can be stopped for biking over 65 miles per hour. Ho <laughs> ho, shout out to our Connecticut viewers. The work of animating the show was put on the shoulders of Klasky Chupo Studio, which was already known for working on Rugrats, Ah Real Monsters, and Rocket Power. The show premiered in October 2000 on Nickelodeon and was greatly popular at first, before making its way into the teenager-aimed block Teen Nick. It was among the few animated series in Nickelodeon that was ahead of its time, featuring slice-of-life stories and teenage issues with several deeper themes. They covered jealousy, breakups, interracial relationships, caffeine addiction, and even suicide. The creators also took the time to honor the memory of Kathleen Freeman, the voice of Mrs. Gordon in the episode No Hope for Courtney, and the memory of Louis Arquette, the voice of Mr. Cilia, in the episode Peace of My Heart. Now bringing it on back to the top of the episode, one of the most notable features of the show was its character's wardrobe, which consisted of more than simply one or two outfits per character. The main characters had about five to six outfits they rotated through every few episodes. Even minor characters had at least two or more outfits, and all three main girls even changed their hairstyles. Two notable exceptions would be Carl and Hoodsy, who always wear the same things unless there's a change in weather. But the show did acknowledge this through other characters frequently mentioning their terrible stench. Carl, it totally stinks in here. Can't you keep your shoes on? No, Ginger, that's the stench of Hoodsy's feet. This might be hard to believe, but the show had more outfits for its protagonist in the first season than most cartoons had for their entire lifetime. In the first season, Ginger had almost as many outfits as Danny Phantom had in three seasons. Now, one of the few shows that could rival As Told by Ginger has to be The Simpsons, and only because they have over 29 seasons. So you may be wondering, how do they do that? Firstly, let's talk about why cartoons choose the same outfit. One benefit is so characters can be instantly recognized by their clothing. Their clothing becomes part of their identity, just like their hairstyle and personality. The other thing to keep in mind is merchandising. It is considered essential to maximize the resemblance between the cartoon characters and their action figure counterparts. So you can imagine how a rotating and varied wardrobe would only be counterproductive. And the final reason, you guessed it, has to do with time. Animation is rarely done in sequential order, thus maintaining continuity from scene to scene becomes a lot harder with inconsistent wardrobe. This is the same reason why main characters' costumes are often dirt and damage proof unless dramatically necessary. So clearly, as you can imagine, the team behind As Told by Ginger had many obstacles to face. They had to ensure that each outfit for every character reflected their personalities, they had to consider merchandising issues, and keep up with the continuity of so many characters all wearing different clothes. This was no joke, especially since it all had to be done before the deadline. Although you can see characters changing outfits more frequently nowadays, there are few shows willing to actually commit to something like this. I mean, let alone let the characters grow. Speaking of which... In the first season, Ginger attends the 7th grade. By the second season, she moves up to the 8th grade, and she then graduates junior high in the middle of the third season and becomes a freshman in high school. Carl's age group works in a similar way as they become junior high students by the third season. But the most visual change has to go to Darren, who wore his headgear for the entirety of the first season and later joined a football team, which resulted in his rising popularity. The series had serious commitment to continuity. Ginger stealing the bank sign in the first episode, Ginger the Juvie, is brought up on multiple occasions in various episodes. Try to steal the sign, now you'll have to serve the time. <laughs> But you do have a pre-existing criminal record from when you got busted for trying to steal. In the episode About Face, Mipsy gets hit in the eye with a rock. 
twice, and she shows up at graduation wearing an eye patch. In the episode Wicked Game, Dodie and Macy conspire with Mipsy and Miranda to break up Darren and Ginger. Courtney then exposes the plot to Darren and Ginger at the end of the episode. The very next episode, Dodie, Macy, and Ginger act as though nothing happened, and for a while it seemed almost as discontinuity. However, it is revealed that the girls decided to deal with what happened by never speaking of it again. And the BFFs have been together through it all. The good times and the bad. Don't remind me. I think what we're seeing here is continuity was pretty important to the creators of the show. But it doesn't explain why Ginger went from being right-handed to left-handed. Explain that, Ginger! I'm on to you, don't think I didn't notice! But maybe the show's commitment to continuity played a part in killing it, since the show's popularity began to decline mainly due to its bizarre schedule. Here is how bad it got. Five episodes were made for the first season lineup, but aired during the second season. At one point, four episodes all premiered in the same week, which made the show exceptionally difficult to follow. Nickelodeon then took the show off the air after airing less than half of the episodes of the final third season. But despite its hiccups, the show still managed to get a satisfying ending to a series that perhaps doesn't always get the credit that it deserves. Well, there you have it, geeks. An episode on As Told by Ginger, As Told by Me, As Supported by You, the subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, have no fear, because it is as simple as hitting that subscribe button and checking out all the links in the description to get to know us better. Stay awesome, geeks.